Hey guys, welcome to the Quantity Surveying Studio. So hope everyone is doing good, having a good time in your career and also in your personal life. So this is going to be a basic video about MEP. So if you are someone from the construction background who has experience in the construction sector, so for you, I don't believe that there would be anything new to learn from this video, any new concepts since you already would be knowing what is MEP all about. Even if you are a, from the civil background, you will be having an idea about what MEP is. But if you are someone who is new to the construction sector or who is planning to move you know, into the construction sector, some of you might be in other sectors like the IT sectors, the electrical, mechanical engineering background engineers. So if you are planning to shift your career, then definitely this is going to be an important video for you. You will get to know something new. Let's imagine a building. See, let's say a residential building having different flats in it. So the construction is over and you are asked to stay in it. But would you be comfortable to stay in that building without any power, any light, any air, any water? Definitely the answer is no, you ne would never be comfortable. So here plays the role of an MEP system. So MEP as the name suggests, it is mechanical, electrical, plumbing. So let's you know, compare a building with our human body. This is something that I always like to compare with when, when someone asks me what MEP is, this is how I try to make them understand. So when you compare your body, let's see in your body, just your bones, your muscles is not that helps you to lead your life or sustain your life. There are a lot of nerves inside it, the brain, these are connected together. Only then you will be able to function properly. So MEP is nothing other than those nerve system, the brain, the different organs inside your body. Without them, just a body would not be you know, enough for you to you know, actually survive in this world. So that is what the importance of MEP is. So let's first take the example of M, mechanical. What are the mechanical components? Let's say AC in your office, you would have seen air flowing through from your ceilings. But you would have imagined like how the air is coming from that ceiling. Actually, if the ceiling is closed, sometimes it might be an open ceiling. So you could see some ducts going through. Sometimes the ceiling will be closed. The ducts will be above that ceiling so here that flow of air is happening there might be different types of equipments used in different types of projects it might be an air handling unit it might be a fresh air landing unit fcus fan coil fan coil units sometimes for big projects big buildings there might be also chillers used so depending upon the type of project and the type of design type of requirements the type of equipment used for the airflow for your ac for your ventilation that will change so basically it's also called hvac heating ventilation air conditioning so all this process is done in a mechanical system so this is just for a basic building there might be different types of infra projects or oil and gas projects wherein there are different types of mechanical systems happening big pumps big mechanical equipments so for the running, all those things will be a part of the mechanical system. And simple example is just your ACs in your house. So here there is not much you no know, technicality involved. It is just mostly it will be either a split unit or a split unit, a window unit, or it might be an indoor air unit. Split unit is not being used as of now, not much. It's mostly the indoor outdoor unit. It will be connected in between each other through some pipes refrigerants gas there will be gas flowing through it refrigerant it's called refrigerant gas so next is the e the electrical part so electrical is the power the power is required for any type of equipment even the ac equipment your light your sockets to run any machine to run any equipment the power is required so for that there will be cables running all across the building through conduits through cable trays and the power will be fed from different types of panels, from distribution boards. So that flow, that system gets involved into the 
E part, the electrical system part. For running any type of machine, be it a big industry, oil and gas industry, any power sector, any industrial sector, any industrial projects, everywhere power is required. So here comes the importance of E that is electrical. And also a part of electrical, we can also include the ELV system, which is also called extra low voltage system. Basically, these are the components like the security, CCTV, the access controls, fire alarms, any building, any residential or commercial buildings will be having all these components. So this is also part of the electrical system. But since a uh, low power is utilized for these type of components, it's called ELV system, extra low voltage system. And again, without this, a uh, proper functioning of building is difficult to happen. You, know, you, you see, if you're uh, someone who's going to office, you will be you know swiping your card to enter your office there might be cameras for overall security of the employees and the staffs in that uh, building uh, fire alarm system if in case of some fire happens there will be fire alarm signaling you that something is wrong so these are an important component that help you to lead a comfortable life in any building any be it a residential building or commercial building, any type of building. And last but not the least is the P, which is called the plumbing. The plumbing part is definitely, as you know, through the means through which water flows. Without water, proper functioning of a human being is not possible. You need water to drink, you wash for your daily needs. Again, water is also required for firefighting purposes. Also, you might have seen red lines running throughout buildings in the malls in the basements everywhere those are pipes that carry water that get that could help extinguish the fire when if at all it happens it's called firefighting pipes there are sprinklers attached to these pipes through which water flows then there are the other plumbing system which is used in a kitchen or in your bathroom areas where water flows and you can use it for your daily needs now many people might tell that uh, MEP uh, system is just small system compared to the entire building. It just is around 25 to 30 percentage of the overall cost of a building. And so there is not much importance for it. But this is actually wrong because what happens is, yeah, I agree that it is just 25 to 30 percentage of the overall cost of a building. But when actually the project happens, a lot of variations happens in an MEP system. There would be a lot of design changes, a lot of additional requirements. And if you see in any project, the disputes mainly happen in an MEP system. There would be a lot of variations. So someone who has knowledge and expertise in assessing those MEP systems is really required. And a civil engineer can do it. I, I would not tell that he cannot do it. But he has all the right to tell that, see, I've done this. I'm basically a civil engineer from whatever knowledge I have, whatever I understood, I have done this. If it is wrong, it is not my mistake. He has all the right to tell that. So, but someone who has a mechanical electrical background, he cannot tell this because he has that basic graduate degree. He ha knows the technical concepts, the basic concepts and someone who with that experience from that engineering background can easily understand can easily assess the entire systems and he could easily do value engineering save a lot of money for the company so the demand uh, you know, around maybe 10 years back the demand for MEP QS was less because what happens was it was already being carried out by someone who is doing the civil part so just to save money so uh, so that they could not assign no need of assigning any other person to just look after MEP to save a lot of money companies used to you know utilize these civil resources to carry out the MEP works too but now that is definitely changing everybody has realized that civil is different MEP is different and to save money definitely someone who has an expertise in the MEP background has to carry out the MEP process. Now, the basic responsibilities of a QS and MEP QS is relatively the same, but they are more into the MEP systems. 
they need to look on the MEP drawings, understand how the flaws, understand the schematics. The schematic is the drawings that shows how the flow is happening of the different systems, be it electrical, plumbing, mechanical, and do the quantity takeoffs, understand the market rates to do the rate analysis and provide a proper costing of the MEP systems during the pre-contract stage and once the project starts do the monthly assessment of the contractors the payment assessments uh, if any variations are there understand if whether it is the variation understand what the scope of work is the understand the contract whether the variation that is claimed by a contractor is subcontractor is acceptable or not so all this becomes part of the MEP QS and a lot of vacancies are coming up uh, in India it was rather less but now a lot of vacancies have coming up in uh, MEP part in the MEP QS section in fact I I've seen I've heard people telling from the other countries like the UK Ireland Australia that there is a shortage of MEP expertise MEP resources MEP QS who are experienced so in the future hopefully there would be a lot of opportunities outside India also Middle East yes from all times itself they have been utilizing MEP resources and there has been a lot of MEP QS vacancies and there are a lot of MEP QS working in the Middle East I am an example for almost work seven years in UAE so I know how it works compared to India in the Middle East, definitely they give importance to MEP and they assign someone who has experience in MEP for the MEP commercial activities and civil part for civil commercial activities. Many of my uh, LinkedIn connections uh, message me out asking me how they can start their career in this MEP field. Uh, again, it depends upon you whether you would like to I know you, whether you are interested in the execution side, the project management side or the commercial management side. So it completely depends on you. Easily if you, if you are basic, the basic graduate is definitely required an electrical or mechanical engineering graduate. Even electronics also are considered. Now there are a lot of fresher openings coming up in MNCs. I've seen a lot of MNCs putting up vacancies for freshers. Keep your LinkedIn pages updated. Keep connecting with people in LinkedIn. Also, Nokri.com Nokri is a good platform where you can prepare your CVs and search for jobs, pressure jobs. LinkedIn is another uh, platform. You can connect with people. There are a lot of jobs being posted for freshers. You can try your luck through that way. Again, if you need any advice on how to move your career about in the MEP sector, do message me in any of my social media platforms i can help you with whatever knowledge i have with whatever you know, experience i have gained in my 11 years of career so thanks a lot for watching this video have a good day take care bye